What's up guys? It's been over six years since we started the Lacrosse Network and a lot has happened in those six years. A lot is still happening, as you can probably tell from the title of this video. And we will get to that. But first, we want to tell you the story of the Lacrosse Network. So let's take it back, all the way back to the beginning. Like, I'm not even here. Get out of here. Yeah, like that far back. So I grew up here in Southern California, and when I first started playing lacrosse, like 15 years ago, no one knew what lacrosse was. And it really wasn't treated like any of the other sports. So I played lacrosse for all four years in high school, and then when it came time for college, I moved out of Los Angeles and went to college at UC Santa Cruz. While I was there, I was asked to coach a high school team that was brand new to lacrosse. So in the first year that I was a coach there, we went 0-11. We didn't win a single game. And I knew that if this team was gonna get better, if these kids were gonna get better at lacrosse, they needed to become lacrosse junkies. That's kind of what I was. I used to read Inside Lacrosse Magazine. I would go online and find whatever videos I could and just watch them over and over and over again. Once YouTube came out, I watched Mike Powell's highlight tape like basically every single night. The next season, I started showing them film, every single VHS tape that I could get my hand on, and we weren't watching film to like learn the X's and O's. I wanted them to get connected to the players. Guys like Kyle Harrison, Paul Rabel, Mike Powell, the guys that I looked up to and I wanted to play like, I wanted them to get connected to. And four years later, I had a dedicated group of lacrosse players who absolutely loved the sport. And that year, we won our league championship. So we went from not winning any games to four years later being the best team in the area. And that showed me truly how much power media has to make people fall in love with the sport. All right, so after I saw what could be done in this small town of Santa Cruz to really grow the game, I wanted to do this on a global scale. What if there was more media in the sport? What if you didn't have to get VHS tapes? What if you could just turn on your computer and watch lacrosse? What if you could watch any video you wanted and share it with somebody? That, for me, was the way I thought the sport could actually start to grow. So I moved back to Los Angeles and recruited my friend Julian. We put down a six foot folding table in my room and started something called the Lacrosse Network. And we actually called it the Lacrosse Network because the way we would talk about it was like the NFL network for lacrosse, like 24 seven content about lacrosse. So we just called it the Lacrosse Network. So we went out and spent all of our money on a camera. So we had a camera and a MacBook. First, we started just putting up videos from my college team. And after that, we just filmed whatever lacrosse we could. Like, I think the first video we actually made was about a pickup game in Irvine, California. Our goal was to make a new lacrosse video every single day. So we were filming whatever lacrosse we could. So we started telling people about our mission. You're watching, you're watching, and you're watching. And you're watching the Lacrosse Network. The guys from the MCLA brought us on board to live stream their games, a game every single week. Welcome to the Lacrosse Network. This is Samir Chaudhry. I'm here with Chris Marshall. The guys at Adrenaline Lacrosse believed in us and brought us on board to film at their events and at the LXM Pro Tour. Let's watch the replay. That's Kyle Harrison tearing the net off the goal, literally. I I've never seen that. And we reached out to this filmmaker in Colorado who was making a documentary called... Was that me? Yeah, that was you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Colin was making a documentary called Club Ball, and I sent him an email. I played lacrosse in college at the University of Colorado, and the year after I graduated, I started filming a web series about my team called Club Ball. Do any of you guys remember Club Ball? I remember we used to get a lot of emails that some of you wanted to play lacrosse at Colorado because you watched Club Ball. When I put out the trailer for Club Ball, Samir sent me an email that day asking if we could put my series on TLN. So while I was in Colorado, we put out all six of the Club Ball episodes. And at the end of those six months, Samir asked if I wanted to move to Los Angeles and start working for the Lacrosse Network. What's up guys? It's Samir from Lacrosse Network. I'm here with uh, one of the newest members of Team TLN. Colin Rosenblum. So I thought I was only moving out for three months, but those were the craziest three months of my life. We traveled to every stop of the LXM Pro Tour. We live streamed the games we did behind the scenes. One, two, three. We gave away free gear every Friday for months. Welcome to our first installment of Free Stuff Friday. This is the gear for this week. Contest Colin here. I'm Contest Colin. And I'm Sweet Gear Samir. This is a custom LXM Pro jersey. We hit 4,000 subscribers. We made Sports Center top 10 plays. We hit 10,000 subscribers on the channel. And by the end of the summer, we had signed a deal with the NLL to live stream every single one of their games. Catch all the indoor lacrosse action starting Saturday, December 28th, live on the Lacrosse Network. At this point, the channel is really taking off. So, January 2013, 
was our first time going to LaxCon. And this was the first time we had ever seen and met the actual community that was watching our channel. And the winner is Sammy Boy Tellum. Sammy Boy Tellum! Sammy Boy Tellum! And I'll never forget what that felt like to actually meet the people who are watching it and realize it was working. So after LaxCon, we were really energized. And then because of all of you, we grew an audience to the point where we got the opportunity to document Team USA as they prepared for the World Games. And we made a web series called Road to the Rockies. And after we put that series out, we got texts and calls from guys like Kyle Harrison and Paul Rabel. That changed everything. That was really the first time that the pro guys were exposed to TLN. And the first time that they really understood what we were trying to do. And at this point, our idea and our mission were spreading. People were starting to catch on with what TLN was trying to do. And then all of a sudden, one day, we got a phone call. I wasn't actually on the call though, so. I yeah, mean, you, you got a phone call, I didn't get the phone I'll, call. I'll take this. So we got a call from a company called Whistle Sports, and they really believed in what we were doing. They wanted to buy our company and hire all three of us. Now this meant that we had a team of advisors and people on our side that wanted to see TLN grow and succeed. And we had an office in New York. New York City. So now we had all the tools to build TLN the way we wanted to build it. So at this point, we realized there needed to be way more people making content in the community. So we partnered with Paul Rabel. We helped Paul launch his own channel while also filming with him for our channel. And once we started filming with Paul, we got to start filming with a whole bunch of other pros. Joe Walters, Rob Pinnell. I got to make a show with Kyle Harrison. Colin and Kyle is still like one of the most awesome shows. And we're out. With Whistle Sports, we also got to collaborate with all types of other channels on YouTube, like the video we made with Paul and Dude Perfect. Yeah! That video has like 20 million views. That's the type of exposure we've always been trying to get for lacrosse. It was during this time that we launched the Weekly Watch. We started filming a ton of documentaries. We launched an app and we made Play Lax Day, the international holiday for the sport of lacrosse. So for all the people around the world who are playing, whether you're playing in India, Japan, Australia, Germany, China, or in a small town in the US, there is a greater community out there. And Play Lax Day really brings that whole community together. So being a part of Whistle Sports also meant that we were able to grow a team and actually start hiring people to work at the lacrosse network. And for the past two years, the team in New York has done a phenomenal job, bringing us series like Through X, Going West with Utah, Drive, and RJ's Top 5. TLN Nation's everywhere! And not only has the team at TLN grown, but over the past two years, the lacrosse community has become creators. It is inspiring the amount of pros and people out there who are creating media about the sport. And that was always the mission. More media in the sport means more people will get exposed to it, means more people will play it. And with that, we now are going to talk about the fact that yes, we are moving on from the lacrosse network. <laughs> so six years ago, when I was sitting in my bedroom, I remember having this thought that one day I wanted to be able to flip on TLN, and yeah, I thought it was gonna be on TV at that time, but one day I wanted to be able to flip on TLN and watch it as a fan, because TLN was something that I always wanted when I was a kid. When I was playing lacrosse here in Los Angeles, I always felt like I was misunderstood. Like no one knew what I was doing or why I cared so much about this sport. And I always wanted to connect to a bigger community of lacrosse players and I just didn't know how. And now I truly feel like I can be a fan of lacrosse content and I can sit back with my phone or my computer and watch all the amazing content that all of you guys are creating. We are honored and humbled to be a part of this community that is so hardworking and entrepreneurial and proud of what we're doing. Can't say thank you enough for letting us. This is tough. Yeah, it is really tough. Yeah. Everything that we've learned over the past six years has come from being members of this community. It's given us an opportunity to start a business, make lifelong friends, become filmmakers, get every opportunity that we've had up to this date. It's because of all of you and because of the entire lacrosse community. All of our best friends are a part of this community and we're just like massive lacrosse fans. So we'll definitely still show up in the lacrosse community, but we just won't show up regularly here on TLN. But 2019 will be a huge year for the lacrosse network. The team that is in place right now has so much in store. Actually, let's give you guys a little preview of some stuff you can expect in 2019.
It's gonna be good. Right? Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. Look at that stuff. So we'll always be around. We'll definitely be making videos on the internet for, I mean, I, as long as we possibly can. Yeah. And we'll probably see you guys out at different lacrosse events. So from the bottom of our hearts, we just wanna say thank you. This has been an unbelievable six years. And we could not have done it without all of you. So again, thank you. Lastly, I'll say keep playing, keep sharing, and make sure to do your part in growing the game through the power of media. Peace! Welcome to Freestyle Friday. I'm Contest Colin. And I'm Sweet Gear Samir. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to Freestyle Friday. Whoa! <laughs> What's up guys? I'm Contest Colin. What's up guys? Samir here from Lacrosse Network. Keep the subscriptions coming. Um, tell your friends about the Lacrosse Network if they don't already know. 